In this question, we're provided with a graph that shows the potential energy profile for a chemical reaction. So we can see for our graph, we have potential energy in kilojoules per mole on the y-axis and then reaction progress on the x-axis. So that's why we start with reactants on the left and we end up with products on the right. That's the reaction progressing forwards from reactants to products. So our first step here is going to be figuring out the potential energy of our reactants and the potential energy of our products. So to do that, all we need to do is look on our graph and read off the y-axis at our reactants and products. So for the reactants, that's here. So that's going to be 30 kilojoules per mole. And for the products, if we draw a horizontal line across to our y-axis, that's going to be in between 0 and 10. So that's going to be 5 kilojoules per mole for the products. So we know our potential energy of our reactants and our products. Next up is to calculate the enthalpy change for the forwards reaction. Now enthalpy change, that's basically the change in energy during our reaction. So to find our enthalpy change, we're going in the forwards direction. So we're starting at our reactants and we're ending up at our products. So that is our enthalpy change there, our delta H enthalpy change for our reaction. We can see our arrow is pointing downwards. So that means it's going to be negative. We started at 30 and we ended at five. So our enthalpy of reaction is going to be 5 minus 30, which gets us negative 25 kilojoules per mole. Okay, finally we're asked, is energy absorbed or released during the forwards reaction? Now, we can see our reactants had more energy than our products. That's why our change in enthalpy was negative, because we're losing energy. So if we're losing energy, that means energy must be released. So we can just add on here, for a positive delta H, that's going to be energy absorbed. For a negative delta H, that's going to be energy released. And then lastly, it asks, is the forwards reaction endothermic or exothermic? Endothermic means we take in energy. So that means we would have a positive enthalpy change. Exothermic means we release energy. So that would be a negative enthalpy change. So since we have a negative enthalpy change, we've got energy released, this is an exothermic reaction. Let's do one more question of this type. So again, we're gonna start by finding the potential energy of the reactants and products. So for our re reactants, here's our potential energy, it's 40 kilojoules per mole. For our products, It's between 20 and 40, so that's going to be 30 kilojoules per mole. So we can fill those out here. We had 40 for the reactants, and we had 30 for the products. Now it's asking us for the enthalpy change, this time of the backwards reaction. So this time, we're starting with the products and ending with the reactants. So for our backwards reaction, we're going like this to get our enthalpy change or delta H of our reaction. We're going from the products to the reactants. This time our arrow is going upwards. That's showing that we're taking in energy or absorbing energy. So to calculate our enthalpy change of reaction, we're going to take our final energy, which is going to be 40, the reactants, because we're doing a backwards reaction, we're ending with the reactants. Subtract our initial energy, which is our products, which is 30, and that's going to get us 10 kilojoules per mole. So it's a positive number. So we can enter that over here. Finally, it's asking us, 
is energy absorbed or released during the backwards reaction. In the backwards reaction, energy is absorbed because we have a positive enthalpy change. And is the reaction endothermic or exothermic in the backwards direction? Again, since it's a positive enthalpy change, we're absorbing energy, our energy is increasing. That means we have an endothermic reaction. 